I'm sitting right now with Henry Winkler and Lynn Oliver. Lynn, Henry, <laughs> we do that. who are together, right, the Here's Hank series. That's and right. Hank Zipser is the original character that came out of this. You right. just were telling me how many total now of these There's wonderful 31 books. 31 novels total. 31 novels. Yeah. Everybody knows you from your Happy Days time yes. and your acting career afterwards. Yes. that goes on and on. But these books, 31 of them now, mm -hmm. have made a huge impact in the writing world, especially for kids who have dyslexia like you did growing up, Henry. Let's start right there. Let's, sure. Let's talk about that sort of sure. understanding that you had something that affected the way you could read and, and process information. This is what I learned over my life. It does not matter how you learn. It doesn't matter how difficult school is. It does not in any way affect how brilliant you are already. And children have to know that. We celebrate the top 10% of a class. What happened to the bottom 3%? The plumbers, the dancers, uh, some of them are uh, uh, pediatric neurosurgeons. The actors. Actors. <laughs> yeah. but, but that discovery, though, that you had, that you could put a name to what afflicted you. Right. Dyslexia it didn't come until after you were unhappy. I was older. Yeah. So I was really angry when I first discovered it because all of that yelling, all of that punishment, all of the humiliation was for nothing. Right. Then I said, okay, so I have it. Then you learn to negotiate it. Now I think maybe I wouldn't be sitting here with Lynn. I wouldn't have been able to write these books with Lynn. Um, if I wouldn't have a career, if I didn't have to fight through it. Yeah, let's talk about that, that sort of sense of when you first started writing these books. This was, did you, first of all, did you think you would ever be a writer? And what was it that brought you two together to make this happen? Well, I had been, I was the opposite of Henry. I had always been a writer and always wanted to be a writer. And when Henry and I met, we were brought together by a mutual friend. And over lunch, Henry told me the story of his childhood. And I thought, here's this very articulate, accomplished man who suffered all through childhood because he wasn't good in school. That's a very moving story and a very affecting story. So we created a character together who's smart, funny, resourceful, popular, who's got all the gifts, except that he's bad in school. And that's such natural material for children's books. Yeah. So how did you, but who, when you guys came together, um, who paired you and, and how did that all happen? My manager at the time, Alan Berger, uh, nine, 90 days later, after he said, oh, I'm going to introduce it to my friend Lynn, I think you should write books about your learning challenges. What did you think about that when they first told you that? I thought it was insane. I thought I couldn't do it because I believed I was still stupid. Still? Yeah. So I, there was no way I was writing a book. And then we figured out our system... Uh, I walk around her office or sit in the rocking chair across uh, from her and the desk and uh, Lynn types. Lynn has a thought. She types. I wait. Then all of a sudden she reads me what she's written. We argue over every word. I think the fact that we both came out of television, Henry is an actor and as, and as a director and producer and I as a producer and television writer, we're used to, to collaborating. Collaborate. And we're used to discussing ideas and working them out in a room together. Yeah. So it was a very natural process for well, us. And Hank is hilarious. I mean, one of the things yeah. that I think kids, any kid, doesn't matter if you're affected by dyslexia or not, but they're going to love the fact that Hank is just darn funny. I mean, it makes me laugh. We think that comedy is the entry point for reading for the rest of your life. I mean, I now love to read. I didn't read for the longest time because I thought I was scared. So we write, we write, if it doesn't make us laugh, it doesn't go in the book. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just for dyslexic kids, obviously, but you have a special font in the book. In the Here's Hank books, yeah. yeah that font is called Dyslexi. It's the first time it was ever used in America. And it was created by a Dutch typographer who is himself dyslexic and has two dyslexic kids. So the actual way the letters are drawn and spaced and laid out on the page makes it easy, physically easy, to decode the words. Yeah, I wish I had it. So tell me about that, like, discovery, because you, you write, you've written a lot about teachers that have sort of, some that understood you, some that didn't. Well, the, the teachers are in the book. Yeah. Miss Adolph was my real teacher. Uh, she wouldn't let, she was... Miss um, Adolph. Uh, really... <laughs> Actually, her name. <laughs> her name. 
Really? I think she was related. <laughs> uh, and then there was Mr. Rock, who literally said one sentence to me. He said, Winkler, you're going to be okay when you get out of high school. Did you hear that then at the time, though? Did I you? heard it. I kept it in my heart. It's there today. I'm saying that kids know they don't do well. They know they're not keeping up. They don't need adults to remind them that and call them names. You Talk, know? The names thing is important because sometimes even when you're joking, the name of you, you know, you're, you're so dumb. How did you think that can no. be really brutal, especially if they have something like dyslexia? But even without it, those are things to your point. You keep it in your heart. Absolutely. We write about bullying. And so in Hank's case, he gets bullied because he doesn't do well in school. But every kid has the opportunity to be bullied about something. You're too short, you're too tall, you're too fat, you have acne, you wear glasses, you wear braces. So in our books, nothing good ever happens to the bully. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. The teachers, again, I want to revisit that one more time because I think for a lot of teachers who are dealing with 30 kids in a class, 40 kids in a class. Herculean. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard to, when you have a, one that has unique needs. I mean, it is the job of the teacher, obviously, to understand each child and to do their best. But when there's one that has something special that thing that I've heard you say before is to keep just try you know just get in there and try and the, not necessarily be judged child, how you do a child has to know that if they have it in their imagination they can make it a reality and fear can stop them cold or embarrassment can stop them from being who they are our job as adults is to support that child so that they can meet the destiny that's already inside them. And your children, you found, were also dyslexic. I was a different parent than my parents. Really? So, so what did you, because you'd gone through this, and then you had to parent a dyslexic child. I'll tell you, you, you know, listen, each child is different. So my youngest son, Max, listened to the radio. I was told, you can't listen to the radio and do your homework. He was supposed to, he had a great desk, a light, and a chair. He used the chair to rest his knee on. He would listen to the radio. The grades were still coming home. I thought, oh, maybe he's using the radio to funnel the world out so that he can burrow into his studies. I learned to you shut that up. Out. Really? So yeah. I think a lot of parents wouldn't necessarily, I might be one of them, wouldn't necessarily understand that that might be a learning tool. I didn't know either until I realized, well, let's look at the whole picture here. If you're quiet, and you're, watch, you're, you're watching your child, they will tell you exactly who they are mm -hmm. and what they need at that moment. Yeah. This has become a mission for both of you. 31 yeah. books. I mean, this is something, this is more than just a passing interest. But this it's is fun. Yeah. We, we have fun. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> no, we have fun all the time. We have a great deal of all fun. All the time. But also it is a mission because we see so many kids who are beleaguered. They're just little kids. They're 7, 8, 9, 10 years mm -hmm. old, and they feel bad already they feel bad about themselves mm -hmm. and there's no re there's no reason for that mm -hmm. so we actually through our books are speaking to the parents and the caregivers as well which is to say these every child has a talent and so our job as adults is to see what their talent is and lead them toward it right, we always right. say if your child has a reading disability don't get them a reading teacher get them an art teacher you know, find out what they're, what they love, what they're going to succeed at, and help them with that. That's right. a real big parenting tip. I cannot tell you how many parents come and listen to us speak uh, with their children and then go, oh my goodness, I'm going to talk to my child differently from now on. That is a byproduct we didn't know was going to happen. But I, one of the one of the things that makes us the proudest, I think, making them uh, realize who their kid is, and making that kid laugh. Yeah. Something that was completely shocking for me was when people would come up to Henry when we first started doing this, and say, "My child is dyslexic or has a learning difference. What's the cure? When will they be cured?" And his response is a really interesting one. You you never get rid of your dyslexia. You learn to negotiate it. You learn to make it work for you. Yeah. Well, that was the big, when I, when I, things that I've read about you, Henry, is interesting that well into, even after you were diagnosed and well after that, you were still carrying the burden of Absolutely. the dyslexic and the shame to some degree Absolutely. of being a dyslexic. It is exactly what you said before. 
a child is young enough, you call them a name often enough, they will say, oh, I guess that adult knows what they're talking about. I am, therefore I am. Yeah. So the, uh, it's not just dyslexia either. It's just the idea of standardized tests and that some kids kind of can rise to that challenge right. and some kids can't. So here we are in a, in a society that values that sort of right. standardized, you're up here, and if you're not here, you're sort of dragging the rest of us down. And so that whole notion, this, these books really fight against that, but you're also fighting against a schooling system and an education system that is not built We're, yet uh, we're trying to, to fight against that. a cultural norm that says there's one most valuable kind of intelligence, which is the kind of intelligence that's rewarded in, in school performance. But we all know that people's ability to be happy in the world and to be successful comes from a variety of diverse kinds of intelligence. You can be emotionally intelligent or physically intelligent. So what we're trying to do through these books is show examples of all kinds of ways to achieve, to mm -hmm. succeed. There are many ways to get there, and standardized testing and, and getting into Princeton is only a very tiny percentage of the ways yeah. to get there. I certainly agree with that. I, I met a little boy 15, not a little boy, 15 years old failed at everything but through his school he was a journeyman for a plasterer hmm. so he goes after school and he works as a an apprentice and all of a sudden he started to realize he said I, I could open a I'm good at this I could I could own a I could own a company I could be a plasterer there was no room here this morning before I started now look at this. there are four walls here I need that kid. I'm not building my own house. I need that little boy to be a great plasterer. How do we, how do we not value the greatness in our children? Right. Well, these books are helping a great deal. Thanks. You're, and, and what a legacy for the two of you yeah, with these very books. Meaningful. I mean, as much as you're acting, as much as your work and uh, your other work, mm -hmm. these books are a legacy that I think you can all be really proud of. Opening the doors for a lot of new achievers to understand that they're normal. Really appreciate you guys both being great. here. It's Thank wonderful you so to much meet you. What a great to conversation. Oh, yeah. It was a great conversation. I enjoyed it too. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, Thank the you. books are here's Hank, the Hank Zipser series, Lynn Oliver, Henry Winkler. Thanks so much for being with us.